the strange town, uh, small town. Small town. Uh, so a Detroit girl moving to a small town in Oklahoma, that must have been a change for her. And I take it you lived off base. Yes, finally got off base. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you had to get married to do it, but you finally got off base. Yep. We had a little uh, duplex. Mm -hmm. The walls were like paper, especially separating the bathroom. Mm -hmm. There was an old man on the other side of the wall, and he was a character. So uh, one night, one one day, he'd uh, <laughs> he'd come in there and. My wife and I were near there, just talking, and we hear through the wall, he's banging on the wall saying, the guy can't even use the shitter without you making all that noise. <laughs> so, so we found a home <laughs> to rent. To rent. And let him have his shitter. So, and you were but it was a typical Oklahoma home. Mm -hmm with a floor furnace, mm -hmm. with a, which had a big grill on the floor. Mm -hmm. It looked like waffles. Mm -hmm. Well, guess who got up one night in the middle of the night and stepped on it? Mm -hmm. I might still have some of those... The grid marks. The grid marks on my bottom of my foot. It was a, actually a very large space heater uh, built into the floor. Whatever you want to call yeah. it. It's I grew up with one of it those. It was a pain in the foot. Yes. Yes. It sure as heck would. And we, there was an accident, an accident uh, about a half a block away from my house. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I ran out and saved a little girl's life. This is an automobile accident. Yeah. yeah. She was bleeding from her temple and her forehead, and I, I stopped the bleeding. It was big right, right up in the, in the Enid's newspaper and the base newspaper, and I mm -hmm. got commendation for it. And well, what rank were you at this yeah. point in time? Do uh, you remember? Pardon me? What, do you remember what your rank was? Airman first, airman second, two stripers? I three, think it was a two striper. Airman might second. Have been three striper. Okay. Which was sergeant back then. The Air Force had a pretty good habit of changing around all the designations the around, yeah. But you see here, E4 is a sergeant. Right, E4 is a sergeant, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you went in you went in the Air Force in sixty five, uh, you had your twelve weeks in Lackland, you had your eight weeks at uh, Gunther, you had another uh, twelve weeks at Brooks. And now, basically two years in at uh, in Vance Air Force Base. You've been in two and a half years, roughly, to this yeah. point. Yeah, that's roughly. about right. Two and a half years, and then I uh, and to finally be done with all the training. Basically, then yeah. I then I, I my wife uh, and I found out that she was pregnant, mm -hmm. and. Two weeks after that, I got orders for Vietnam. As if there were not single guys or other mm -hmm. guys who wives were not pregnant mm -hmm. that wanted to go to Nam. No, no, they 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 gave me the, the logic, yes, the uh, privilege of spending a year in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So we must be towards the end of '67. Uh, '68. Yeah. yeah, beginning of '68. January '68. Off you go. January 19th, 68, as a matter of January fact. January 19th, saying, that day seems familiar like tattoo or something. It's tattooed. Yes. Uh, and off you go. So, oh, off I go. So you went from Vance to Travis, I was presume? No, actually I went to... Straight? I, from went, I went to, uh, well, to, to Denver mm -hmm. and up to... Uh, Washington, mm -hmm. and from there to Hawaii. So I can't say I haven't been to Hawaii. I got 
I spent an hour and a half in the mm -hmm. terminal, mm -hmm. and then and then to Guam, and then to uh, and then to Guam. Uh, so this was a charter flight. Uh, air, this was a this civilian, was, yeah, a civilian charter flight. Charter yeah. flight yeah. I didn't know that they, they flew anybody out of uh, out of Seattle area because I most of the Surprise. people Air Force went out of Travis in California. Yeah, well, I I wasn't fortunate enough. I, Mm -hmm. But they landed at Cameron. Okay. So Cameron Bay. So you're uh, in Cameron Bay. It's mm -hmm. January 1968, uh, and you're. That's just the basically incoming. This is where everybody kind of came in. And, yeah. and they sent you, and did you get any in-country training? I know that sometimes they gave people that couple of day uh, Vietnamese training class, you did nothing. Nothing. Put you on another plane? Put me on another plane, yes. went 35 miles south east, and to, to Fenray. Mm, to Fenray. Uh, and you would have been in what squadron then? The, is this the... 35th USAF Dispensary. Okay. Van Rang Air Base. Republic of RVN. RVN, Republic of Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so now your duties at the 35th, this was a, a clinic, a dispensary? It was a dispensary. Okay. And, and the flight surgeon's office was in a a hooch across the street. Mm -hmm. So I uh, reported there and uh, did what I was used to doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, um, oh, what else? Like I said before, I, I gave Pat Nugent, Johnson's son in law, mm -hmm. uh, his medical. Uh, clearance onto the base because mm -hmm. he was a load master in 123s mm -hmm. and 130s so and he worked on fan ring or out of fan ring mm -hmm. so so you're assigned to the ground you're you're right now you're on the ground working mm -hmm. in the clinic uh, for right, the flight surgeon's office yeah. Yeah, well i mean you had all this helicopter training and stuff so you're not using that right now you're just not using it no. just just on the ground Happy to be happy, happy at the ground. Happy, 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 happy. Did not did not want to be a uh, target for anybody. So what was your what was your when you landed at Cameron and then took this flight over to uh, Fan, uh, Rang. Fan Rang? What what was your first thoughts of uh, in country? It's hotter than hell here. Mm -hmm. It's like it was like uh, like Houston. Mm -hmm. You know, you could take a hundred showers and you're still sweating like a pig. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, it, it took a long time to get used to it, mm -hmm. but uh, finally it did. Mm -hmm. Just about the <laughs> rough time for my D Rose. <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you have a, you had a hooch, I take it, uh, that you lived in, a uh, barracks or some kind? I had a barracks. Uh, but the uh, thing was, the. Uh, The medic who ran the shot room, mm -hmm. his father passed away. Mm -hmm. So I was volunteered to run the shot room till he got back. Mm -hmm. And he took a, um, 45 days to come back. So I became quite proficient in giving the uh, penicillin shots to the guys that had the yes. gonorrhea. Mm -hmm. Etc. Etc. So, uh, uh, enemy activity was there any? Was there any? Some? We were very, very secure. Mm -hmm. We had a 35-mile perimeter around the base, mm. and uh, maybe once a week, every two weeks, they would send a couple mortars in just to let us know that they knew we were there. Mm -hmm. And so we'd run into the. What is it? The sandbags? Are Sandbag, right? yeah, the bunker yeah, or whatever. Bunker, that's it. Bunker, yeah. And, um, but they didn't do any damage while I was there. Um, 
This was, I, you said I, southeast of Saigon or southwest of Saigon? 